The tree we're looking at here is in the Pinaceae family. The genus is Pinus, and the specific epithet is Sylvestris. So Pinus Sylvestris is the species name. This is Scots pine. We're going to take a closer look at some of the identifying features between Scots pine and other pines. Here is the bark of Scots pine, and like many pines, it has large, platy bark. It might start out as slightly scaly, and then developing into plates. Many pine bark have multiple colors, so here we see some gray mixed with some reds. And if we look down a little further, we can see that the plates become larger and thicker as the tree ages. You can start to see a thickening here and bigger plates as the tree ages. Here, the bark is a very distinct orange color and very, very flaky and papery. So the younger portions of the tree or bark will be very orange and flaky in color until it ages and then it turns into plates that have less of the orange. Looking at the twig, we can see that the needles are attached in groups to the twig. And needles on most of the pines will be attached in groups of two, three, or five. And the Scots pine has a two, is a two-needle pine. And you can see at the end it's bundled together in the bundle sheath. And this is where it attaches to the twig. The Scots pine also has a slightly twisted needle pair as it comes out. Pine cones, you might see several different age levels of pine cones on any one tree. Pine cones take two years to fully develop. Here we see a green cone, which is common on all of the pines, and this is what a newer cone would look like for a Scots pine. Starts green, and by the end of the summer or fall, this will be brown, and the scales will start to open up. This end piece where you see the little bit of brown against the green is the umbo. On Scots pine, it is unarmed, meaning there is no thorn or spike. Here is a mature and open pine cone, and you can see the woody scales. Inside here, you can still see a few of the seeds or where the seeds would have emerged from. The seed head would be the actual seed would be right toward the center of the cone, and then it typically has a little wing that as the cone opens, the wind can carry that seed to another location. Many of the Scots pine have a more twisted form as they grow and get into the upper canopy. This can make for a unique form for urban trees. Here are two other Scots pine in the landscape just to give a contrast of the straight tall pine you might be used to to these flatter topped, slightly irregular shape. 